everybody. Welcome to Pro World Live. I'm Danielle from Pro World. Kate okay, behind the camera. And we are here today showing you floor mats. We have um, this new product that came in. So we wanted to kind of show you what it is, show you how to print it, and kind of get you a little bit comfortable with doing an oversized sublimation design. So a lot of our sublimation equipment whether you're working with the SG500 that can go up to eight and a half by 14, or you're working with the SG1000 that can go all the way up to 13 by 19, these mats are a bit bigger than that. And so you have to kind of piece two of them or multiple sheets together to sort of get your design to kind of cover everything. So we're gonna show you how to do that and um, you know get started with kind of letting you kind of experience this product. So we have, um, well, do we have any questions before we get started, Kate? Not yet. We got Donna from Maine and Yvette says hi. Oh, hello. Welcome, everybody. All right. So I have, so these floor mats, I know I have this, I have, I have one currently in my kitchen, um, but they can go indoor or outdoor and they're really, um, I want to say just a very large mouse pad, if that's a good way to describe them. If we maybe can, you can kind of just see the thickness. They're much softer though than a mouse pad. You, it, this is felt, but it really does feel like a bit of a cushion. I think a little bit more cushion than, than a mouse pad. So if you kind of gauge it from that, it feels fuzzy more than a mouse pad, <laughs> but the thickness and the silicone is very similar. Okay, so what I have here, I have, I have a finished one too, because not that I cheated, but I prepared it. So this is gonna be the print that is gonna go onto the floor mat. But I was using my SG500 printer and my sheet size is eight and a half by 11. Based on my design, I didn't need it any bigger. I didn't need eight and a half by 14. So, um, so I needed four of them to get me across my floor mat. So what we're gonna do is piece them together. And I'm gonna show you how as soon as I separate my sheets. And as I'm doing that, Kate can chime in if anybody else um, came in or has questions. Uh, no questions yet, we got Tanya, Keith, Michelle, Christine, Shanta, Jesse, Big Lot Free. Welcome everybody. All right. All right, so the very first thing that you are going to do is I have my sheets all printed up. And what I wanna do is piece them together. So I have, I have, you see this kind of edge here from your printer. And this was printed with our sublimation printer, the SG500. And I'm just gonna trim the areas that I don't want. I wanna trim off that little white edge. So that way, when I go to piece them together, it'll be easier for me. And you're gonna do it on both sides. Okay. And this is probably the hardest part of printing this mouse, or printing this mouse pad, printing, printing this floor mat, is getting it prepared. So we're gonna make sure that we, and I can actually go a little bit closer here, okay. All right, so what you're gonna do now is, all right, good. Um, we're just gonna kind of line it up, get your bottom, get your top, and sort of piece it together so that everything is in line, and I'm losing my spot here. This is why I printed one and has it, have it completed too, just so I can, there we go. So when everything looks good and you're you know lined up where you need, then you're gonna go ahead and tape. I like to tape as much as I possibly can because what I'm gonna do is, um, there we go, trim off the back side. So I am going to flip this, kind of flip it over this way. And that, now I'm going to just trim up here because I don't need this and extra pieces you don't, you don't want because sublimation ink is transparent. So any additional ink that you have is going to cause kind of like an overlap or a darker area of ink. So you want to kind of trim that 
best you can. So that way you have very little overlap. And then I turn around and go ahead and tape the back side too. I don't know if you necessarily need to, but I find it works for me. And a lot of this, this is just like my method of doing this, but there are so many other ways to do it. I don't think anybody wait, any way is right or wrong, but it's just, you know, an option. Okay, so now I have that part done, and let me go ahead and trim these edges. Again, you're just trimming off this extra little white border here. And any questions so far, Kate? Um, Michelle was just asking, how do you like the SG500? Oh, I love the SG500. I, I actually have both the 400 and the 500 uh, that I work with and I print from. The ease of use and the color profiles that Sawgrass offers within their system, I think are what make the SG 400 or the 500 or even the 1000 amazing. So that alone makes your job so much easier when, um, when you work with that. Cause you know, you want to make sure that when you're printing something, it's going to print accurate and it's going to print with all the ink that's required onto the paper and be nice and vibrant on your substrate. And I don't think that there's any printer out in the industry that does the printer profile so well. So I would absolutely highly recommend the SG500 if you are considering that as an option. Do you know what the expected durability of these outside is? So with most sublimation products, it's not ideal for direct sunlight. So if you have it under an awning or if you have you know your front porch, it'll last as long as it doesn't get direct sunlight to hit it. Um, and then it'll just start to fade. So it will be fine outdoors, just not directly in the sun. Uh, and, and inside it holds up really well, so. <laughs> you can it. Yes. <laughs> uh, when you press the floor mats, can you use an easy press type of press? An easy press. I think maybe oh oh so. yeah well yes absolutely because those are um so a cricket easy press is what we're kind of referring to and yes you can because those are ideal for sublimation and this is sublimation so that will work for that you might need multiple pressing areas but it would work for you and it really all depends on your design too. Like, as you can see, my design is sort of gonna focus on the center. I'm not doing a full coverage because it, that would be it's not difficult, but you have to really get used to it and piecing the pieces together. Once you kind of get the hang of it, then by all means, you can totally cover this up. But you know, that part you really just have to, you know, work with and kind of test a few things out first. So start, start small, start with a smaller design and then you can kind of work your way up to those big um, overlapped pieces. You think the mat could be cut to make a smaller size? Not sure. I would say so, but you might get some fraying. Um, we'll try it after. I think I have an extra one. Um, we'll cut it and see what happens. Sure. Okay, so now I have this piece lined up, so let me just tape it up here. Oh, and just make sure, don't do what I just did, and I'm going to show you in just a second. Um, don't don't put your tape over your print. Can you see that? That's an oops. Don't do that. This tape is heat resistant, so um, that won't let the ink go. So don't be like me. Okay. And I just did it on that one again. Can they be washed by hand and air dried? Um, yes. I would not see any problem with that. I was actually gonna put mine in um, the washer. Uh, I'll do that tonight and then I'll post back and let you know how it goes. Um, if it goes if it goes horribly wrong, then uh, hand wash. <laughs> but but I'm pretty sure it can go in, in the washer. But I will test it and I'll let you know my results. Okay, we are almost 
almost taped. I'm just kind of like seeing through the paper so I can make sure I'm not messing anything up. All right, so we're almost there. We have just this piece to kind of connect, which is gonna go right here. And then we'll print it up. I think that is right. Perfect, not yet. Okay, now it's good. All right, any other questions? While I'm getting this last couple. All right. All right, so now we're all in. Everybody's where they need to be. I'm gonna swap this print. No, we'll, we'll stick with this print. All right. Move that aside. All right, so now we have to make sure that we are centered and even on our mat. So flip this over because print side down for sublimation. And I am just gonna make sure that I am where I need to be, centered and all. Sometimes it's better just to eyeball these things. I think I'm just gonna eyeball it for, for the live so I'm not overly stressing because that's what I do. All right, that's good enough. We're gonna go with it. All right, and it's sort of straight there and it's straight over here. All right, done. You're gonna just tag it a little bit on the sides here to kind of just keep it down. All right, now, the hint with these is that I like to use a board. Not like a strong board, but I prefer a foam board. You can use cardboard. But when I'm printing something like this where it's a little bit floppy and I'm doing it in multiple stages across my press, because this is going to have to do two separate presses to kind of make sure all the ink is transferred. I want to make sure that this is going to be sturdy enough so I can just slide it across and I don't get some flopping because the flopping will make your ink ghost. So you don't want that. So how I'm going to fix that is put it on a board and you can kind of see I can move the board across my press really easy and I won't have any kind of issue with with any any print um, ghosting or I shouldn't well <laughs> fingers crossed all right so everything where it, where it needs to be I am at and that fell um I just need a nonstick sheet I always lose my nonstick sheet here we go this will work okay I'm at 400 degrees Fahrenheit at 75 seconds and I am at a light pressure light very very light so um, closing and locking not gonna be a whole lot and this is a very small nonstick sheet but I think I can do you have the, a bigger one over there or even that parchment if you can give me that parchment that'll work too in the bag yeah Thank you. So if you don't have a nonstick sheet, grab parchment paper. It will work just fine for you. And I'll just do it the full length. I almost couldn't rip it. <laughs> All right, we're good. Send it on here. Make sure that your print is under your platen so that you're lined up, that it'll actually print for you. And we're gonna close and lock. <laughs> So super light pressure when you're working with the TransPro Plus, I am on a one, possibly two, really light pressure. You don't want it to indent that kind of felt topping of your uh, floor mat. All right, so while we have like 60 seconds, any, any questions?
All right. Awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the paper where it is. I'm going to just slide my foam board across and then I'm going to press again. So don't touch anything, just kind of slide it along. And then hopefully we won't get any ghosting. And then once it's done, then we'll remove everything and it should be amazing. <laughs> All right, 30 more seconds. Right. And I also have this on manual because I don't want it to pop up on its own for me. I want to ease it up on my own so that way nothing moves or shifts. Um, so I do have it on a manual setting. And what size is the heat press again? This is a 16 by 20 heat press. This also has interchangeable platens that are offered so you can always go smaller. Um, but for, for this purpose, the bigger platen, the better. All right, see how I can like ease it open on my own? And I'm just gonna keep it sliding on down and close and lock again. And I see it coming through over there. I hope it'll be okay. <laughs> All right, so another 75 seconds, so 75 on this side, move it over, so another 75, and then we're all, we'll take the paper and the parchment off, and we'll take a look. I usually don't use parchment, but we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> all right, anything else? Uh, no, so when uh, Keith had asked the question about durability for outside, you know, these are great seasonally, so Christmas or, yes. you know, this is for summer. So the one currently in my kitchen is Hello Spring. And now this is going to be Hello Summer. So I'm definitely keeping the seasonal pattern. Um, but yeah, and I have, um, it, they're, they're so good. And they're, they're only eight nine. Is that the price? I think I marked down. I have a cheat sheet here. They're only eight ninety nine. You can absolutely resell them for so much more. And they are designed for sublimation. So it's not like a different kind of floor mat where you're kind of manipulating it to be sublimation ready. These are designed for that. All right. Grab an edge. Pull it away. Oh, this came out so good. There you go. Oh, sorry. How great does that look? Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to swap out my spring mat for this one. So super fun. And here, if you, can you see that? All right, so this was my overlap right here. Can you, can you even see it? Maybe if I zoom up. Mm. That was my overlap right there. So the smaller your overlap, the better, because then you, you barely can see it. But it printed so nicely, and it'll be perfect. So that just helped answer both Allison and Big LA3. Um, does it matter if you overlap the middle section? And what happens when you move it if you double press? So, so right here, if I... I don't know if you can really, right here is where the overlap happened with my heat press. So you can see there's slight color shift in this group right here. So if you just kind of time it better as you're, you know, maneuvering it through your press, that would be a way to lessen that. But that is a very, it's a very slight discoloration and you could probably lessen your time you know if you have a lot of these panels that are going to be overlapping you know trial and error for those but I would say that this is totally acceptable and I don't think any customer would even um, notice but that's that's so slight there but that does happen when you when you overlap when you repress Cassandra says it's great for summer but it's snowing in Colorado right now <gasps> snowing Oh my goodness. We are supposed to hit, well, we are in New Jersey and it's supposed to hit what, 97 we said this weekend. So sorry for you, Colorado. <laughs> Col is it like, Colorado. yeah, I was, it's going to be totally Colorado, yeah, Colorado. And I don't even, I won't even say it cause that's just going to totally butcher it. But, um, sorry for you that there's snow on the ground, but you can do a fun one for your kitchen and say, hello, winter. <laughs> or Christmas in July. <laughs> yeah. 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 Ye
you know, a little, a little in advance there, but. So can you remind us the material and then you're on a foam board. It is not foam board. Oh yeah. I'm on a foam board. So this is your floor mat. Um, it is like a very thick sort of glorified mouse pad material, but it's silicone on the bottom, felt on the top. It's nice and fuzzy. Um, it feels soft and cushiony. You know, like I said, I have one in my kitchen. I put it right in the front of the sink and I do, you know, walk on it. It's very comfy. You know, they say to have some sort of floor mat by your feet in your kitchen. So your, you know, your back doesn't hurt after you, you know, washing dishes for so long, but it is very uh, helpful to have this. And it does give just enough cushion for you. I put this on a foam board, this foam board here, just a normal dollar store foam board. I put that so that way it would help me transition when I slide it across my heat press. It's not necessary, but if you were to do this, if you were to press this and then slide it over and press this side, this is so floppy over here that if it already was printed, it will wind up ghosting because sublimation ink, when it's not fully cured and it kind of imprints on itself, it will ghost. So you don't want any ghosting. And that's why you use foam board or cardboard to kind of just keep it nice and flat and level for you. So that's, that's why I use the foam board because you don't want this. You definitely want that. Uh, what was the price again? $8.99. The more you order, the cheaper they are per piece, but that is the one piece price. And we printed with sublimation. And what else? I think that, ooh, it's, it's like 22 by 17 and a half. No, I lied. 30, 29 and a half, 29 and a half by 17 and a half. All right. Um, is there indoor, outdoor? Yes. Indoor, outdoor, but not direct sunlight. So. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all so very much for watching. Get your floor mat. And uh, we will see you here in two weeks. Bye, everybody.